Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much at this time. We bless your name because you have lifted us up to see together with you in heavenly places. And we are not coming down from the high place who have made us sit. We're not coming down to the level of the people of the world. We're going to remain as high as you have placed us in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, as we retain our position in the Lord, the power, the productivity in ministry, everything that you have ordained for every one of us, we shall have in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, you'll bless your people today. And you prepare us for the ministry ahead. So that, Lord, we'll do great, great, wonderful exploits for you in all our ministries in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Give me a victorious amen. amen. God bless you. A faith clinic amen is different from... Uh, you know, the afternoon, amen, after you're all tired. You understand? So give me a good amen again. Amen. Now this morning, we're talking about our power and our position in Christ. Our power and position in Christ. To such ways, it says our, not his power, but our power. When God gives you a brain, it comes from him, but it becomes yours. That's your brain. When God gives you hands, it came from God, but that's your hand. It's yours. And when God gives you a mind to think, although it came from him, it has become yours. And when God gives you salvation, yes, salvation is of the Lord. That salvation has become yours. It is your salvation. When God gives you a position, yes, it came from him. It becomes your position. When God gives you power, yes, it belongs to God. But it becomes yours and it is given unto you. Our position and our power in Christ. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 2. Reading in verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And has raised us up together. And made us sit together. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This alone talks about your place. Your position. Your privilege. And the peculiarity of who you are. And it talks about your power, what you can do. Look at this. He has raised us up. When did he do that? When he rose from the dead. You know the story. Jesus went to the cross. Before he went to the cross, there have been many people that called upon the Lord. Moses called upon the Lord. Joshua called upon the Lord. And also Daniel called upon the Lord. But understand, they were calling upon the Lord on the basis of the promises they had in the old covenant. Think about this. Any minister of God, any man of God, any child of God will always relate to God according to God's dealing with him. You do not relate to God according to the dealing of God with other people. Abraham, how do you deal with God? I deal with God on the basis of the Abrahamic covenant. Moses, how do you deal with God? Do you deal with God like Aaron deals with God? Like the seven elders deal with God? Like the Israelites deal with God? And Moses said, no. They didn't follow me to the mountain top. And he didn't see the sight I saw. And he didn't hear the word I, he I, I heard. And they did not utter what I uttered. They did not see the back part of the Lord, of the Almighty God, as I saw. And it wasn't given to them, I speak mouth to mouth. 
unto my servant Moses. No, when I relate with God, I don't relate with God on the basis of how Aaron relates with God. David, how do you relate to God? Well, just in a personal way. What do you mean? Well, a king came before me. And that king, there was a way he related with God. It was always a, like a third party relationship. If anything was to be told Saul, God will tell Samuel, Samuel will tell Saul. And if Samuel, if Saul did not do everything the Lord wanted him to do, he will not tell him directly, he will tell Samuel, and then Samuel will say, Saul, but you didn't do everything you were supposed to do. That's how God related with, David, with Saul. How about you? Ah, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, may, he himself, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He is the one himself that restoreth my soul. And he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He is the one that comes and he anoints my head himself. He doesn't even go through the agency or instrumentality of an angel. And he anoints my head, my cup is running over. And you know, what Saul was not sure of, I'm sure of because I deal with the Lord that directly surely now goodness and mercy will follow me all through the days of my life and there's something i can tell you now and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever i'm saying that god deals with everyone the way that person has relationship with the lord why don't you wake up and deal with god the way he has appointed and the way he has ascertained and assured in your own covenant come to daniel daniel how do you deal with god of course i pray uh, do you have some do you sometimes have difficulty when you pray yes, yes, yes i can tell you one instance and that instance i can tell you i was praying like this i prayed i prayed i prayed and i wonder the answer did not come and i checked up again in the book of the prophets and i said look at this promise look at this promise and uh, it took 21 days three whole weeks and then the angel came and he gave me what i needed and i said why did it take such a long time he said it's because of my position what do you mean where is your position he said god is up 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 there and then in the air you have principalities and power and then i am here in babylon down below and the angel had a long distance to go from heaven through the sickness of the conflict of those principalities and powers and then he had to come to me here it took him three weeks and he says can i help you and make you to pray like i prayed and i said daniel thank you very much don't teach me what you are i don't want to deal with god the way you dealt with god he says what but i'm a beloved man i say yes i know you're a beloved man i am also beloved but i am in the new covenant in the new covenant i am not down here i am seated together in heavenly places with the lord jesus christ and when I request anything, when I pray any prayer, when I demand anything, according to the word of God, it doesn't take the answer. It doesn't take three weeks. He says, what? What do you mean? I said, this is a better covenant. This is a higher covenant. This is a richer covenant. And it is based on better promises. And the answer does not have to pass through the sickness and the conflict of those principalities and powers and then travel all three weeks to come to me here because of my position because of where i am i'm here together with the lord jesus christ seated in heavenly places with him and therefore the answer comes directly when you understand your position in christ everything will change your life will change your ministry will change answers to prayer will change and you are in for something this new year you will never be the same again you will pray with more simplicity you will pray with more assurance you will pray with more certainty you will pray with miracles attending your prayer in jesus name those of you from faraway countries 
Suppose you wanted to get something from me. And then you sent the message. And you said, Pastor, I need this. And then I replied to you. And I say, yes, it's coming. And then we send it from here. And it travels and travels and travels and travels. And it takes some days and some weeks to get to you. Eventually you get it. And every time you want to get, that is how you get it. It takes some time. And then here you are at the Congress. You are not far away. And you have a chance. And I call you and I say, you are moderating today. Oh, you say me? I say yes. Moderators, where do they sit? You sit with me here. And while you sit with me here and everybody is quiet and they are doing their good, good things, and then you say, Pastor, am I allowed to talk? I say, of course you are allowed to talk. I'm asking for something. Can I, when can I have it? I say, now we're seated together on the platform here. It is yours immediately. Do you see the difference between the position where Daniel was and where you are? Did you ever understand what Jesus said of all that were born of women? Daniel inclusive. The greatest is John. John the Baptist. But I tell you, but I tell you that the least in the kingdom of God is greater than, tell me, than John. How is that? Well, Daniel did not see Jesus Christ directly. If he had any question to ask, he will go on his knees and then he'll talk to heaven. And then eventually, after some days, after some weeks, the answer will come. John, if he had any question, go and ask him. He's now in Capernaum. He's now in Nazareth. He's not far away. Are you the one to come? Or should we expect another? Bring me an answer quickly. And the answer came that same day. Because he could see what Daniel could not see. So he was greater. He saw the fulfillment that Daniel and Abraham and Moses and Joshua and Elijah and the rest of them could not see. Of all that was born of women, that are born of women, John is the greatest. But he died before Jesus went to the cross. He died before the resurrection. He died before Jesus said, it is finished. And therefore, the least in the kingdom of God now is greater than John the Baptist. Because we can see what he has not seen. We can taste what he has not tasted. And we can partake of what he has not partaken of. Ours is a victory in Jesus' name. Your position and your power in Christ. There are three points always. There are always three, three points. They always come. Number one, our position in Christ. Number two, our power in Christ. Number three, our possession through Christ. Number one, our position in Christ. It tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? What? A new creature. The old creature was a failure. I'm a new creature. I'm not a failure. I'm a success. The old creature was always defeated at the mercy of the devil. And the devil kicked the old creature here and there like football. I'm not an old creature. I am a new creature established and settled in the Lord. The old creature was always afraid. Watch out. Old creatures afraid of the devil, afraid of demons, afraid of witches, afraid of wizards, afraid of dream, afraid of the night, afraid of the stars, afraid of the sun, afraid of the moon, afraid of the cat, afraid of mosquito, afraid of, afraid of rats, afraid of men, afraid of women, afraid of children, afraid of familiar spirit, afraid of not familiar spirit, of familiar spirit, afraid, afraid, afraid every time. The old creature, the new creature, has not been given a spirit of fear 
of timidity, but has been given the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I am a new creature. Which one are you? Yes, a new creature. And if any man be in Christ, just check up. Once you have received Christ as your personal savior, and you are in Christ, you are, are you in Satan? I said, are you, a posse are, are you possessed by Satan? Has Satan swallowed you up? Are you a property of Satan? Are you a child of Satan? Are you a minister of Satan? Who do you belong to? Uh -huh. If any man, if any woman, if any minister be in Christ, he is a new creature. When new creatures pray, Almighty God listens. And when the new creature stands and is standing on the promises, he cannot fall and he cannot fail. Whatever may assail, whatever may come, there is something implanted in the new creature that that new creature, even when you are alone, all by yourself, the Lord will stand by you. You will not fall. You will not fail. And nothing negative will harass your life in Jesus' name. Old things are passed away. You know, when we say old things are passed away, it, it, it has um, a lot of implications and ramifications. At the stage of salvation, old things are passed away. There are some, those old things, old habits, iniquity, sin, and all that. That's not the end. And then when you are sanctified, there is another old thing that passes away. The old nature, the Adamic nature, the old man. And then when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, see, look at this. You have three circles. Are you looking at me? All two. Are you looking up? Yes. Now, you have a circle here, big circle. You have a smaller circle inside. Then you still have a smaller circle inside. Then you still have a smaller, smaller, smaller circle inside. Now, if you are, there are now, I've described for you about five circles. The biggest circle, let's take that as number one. And the next circle, let's take that as number two. When you are in between second circle and the fourth circle, you're inside. And the person that is in between the third circle and the second circle is inside. And the one in between the fourth circle and the third circle is also inside. When you are saved, you are inside the large circle. But you are still outside the next circle. There you are sanctified. There you are now inside inside but you are still outside the third circle you are baptized in the holy ghost now you are inside 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 properly but you are still outside the fourth circle then you come into the inner circle at the very center and now you are really really inside and if any man be in christ really inside all things are passed away we're not talking about sin anymore now we're not talking about self anymore now we're not talking about even all those uh, periphery things anymore we're talking about the old weakness and the old timidity and the old powerlessness and the old prayerlessness and the old lukewarmness you know somebody can be somebody can be saved and yet you know he's still dragging his feet and there are some things to say this fellow is saved i wish some things were passed away again in his life and this fellow is sanctified but when it comes to evangelism and soul winning and confronting people I, I, I wish that something will pass away from his life and then this fellow is baptized in the holy ghost but when it comes to having the dedication consecration commitment of a missionary and a fiery minister like elijah you know it's not exactly like that i i wish that this fellow will be inside 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 and something will pass away again from his life and in this congress whatever remains to pass out to get out of your life it will get out in jesus name and then it says all things are passed away and behold 
All things. Everybody say all things. All things. Say that again. All when you say it, think about it. Say it again. All, all things are become new. New. Ah. Yes, it's true. All things are becoming. I don't steal anymore. Who is talking about that one? I don't commit adultery anymore. We're not talking about that one. My dressing has become new. We're not talking about that. And then even, you know, everything has become new. We're talking about, how about your way of thinking? Has that become new? A little wind is blowing. What's your thinking? Huh. If I'm not careful, I will catch cold. That's your thought pattern your thought life as it become new they are casting out a devil somewhere and i said in the name of jesus come out mm. i don't stay where they do something like that because i don't want that uh, devil to jump out and jump into me what kind of thinking is that your thinking has not become new how can the devil deliberately jump into fire don't you know that for every child of God, especially for every minister of God, Almighty God says, I will be a wall of fire around you. And I will be the glory within you. And the glory of this latter temple, and the glory of this New Testament temple, and the glory of this New Covenant temple shall be greater than the glory of the former temple. How can the devil? Uh, the devil is not that stupid. He's not that ignorant. He knows where fire is, and he is not going to jump there directly, uh, deliberately, and voluntarily. Don't you know that those demons said, what have we come to do with you? And what have you come to do with us? Have you come to cast out into the bottomless pit before our time? we're afraid don't do that they're very much afraid that's why they cannot come into me i said they cannot come into me do you have a devil do you have a demon you know sometimes there's some people this is why it says if any man be in christ is a new creature all things are passed away all things are become new they are ministers, they are preachers, they are saved, they are sanctified, they are filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they will go to the prayer warriors, they will say, uh, Brethren, this congress that we came, I really need something. Uh, there is a devil inside here. You must cast it out before I go. Huh? You have a devil? I said you have a devil? No. Do you have demon? No. Old things are passed away. And all things have become new. If you say it, you have it. If you confess it, you possess it. Because that is the position and the privilege of a real child of God. And look at this in, in Chronicles, in uh, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Who has delivered us? When is he going to deliver us? I said, when is he going to deliver us? He's done it already. Who has delivered us from what? From the power of darkness. Look up here. When Jesus was in his earthly ministry, and you know what he did? He healed the sick. He cast out devils. When is it that Peter went to Christ? To cast out devils from him. Or John. Or James. Or Andrew. Or Matthew. When did they go for their deliverances? Never. They came to Christ. Even before the cross. And the moment they came to Christ. They belonged to Christ. And they were free. Free indeed from the devil, from Satan, from demons, from evil spirits, from familiar spirits. The people in Acts chapter 2, and the, they that gladly received this word were baptized. And the same day, they were added unto them about how many souls? 3,000 souls. When did they go for their deliverance? When was the devil cast out? 3,000 people. Will there not be at least 10 of them, at least 15 of them, at least 50, 100 out of 3,000 that you need to cast out devils from? 
No. You come into Christ. You become a new creature in Christ. And he has delivered us with that salvation. He gives us also a position that the devil cannot toy with. And he delivers us from the power of darkness. And he has translated us from the king into the kingdom of his dear son. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You understand translation? Translation is rapture. The rapture we are waiting for is the translation, the rapture of our body. To live here in the physical and go there literally. But when you are saved and he delivered you, he gave your spirit, your soul, a kind of rapture. And he raptured you and he caught you up and he took you away and he translated you from this world into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, when you are translated into the kingdom of his dear son, witches don't have authority in that kingdom. Evil spirits don't have authority in that kingdom. Thank God we have been translated. I say thank God we have been translated. And we're not where we used to be. We're not what we used to be. We're not who we used to be. And the things that used to be on our head, in our brain, in our tummy, in our bone, is now under our feet. And every time you walk, especially when you are in church, and every time you walk around, especially when you are worshipping the Lord, and I see some of you, that when you pray, you walk around, you go up and down. And if there's no place, I see some of you get into the aisle there, and then you're walking up and down, you're saying, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Do you know, every time you're walking like that, you're marching on the head of the devil. And every that's why I pity some people whenever I say, can we stand up to pray? Instead of standing on the head of the devil, and you know, if you're not able to walk, I'm just marching there and, you know, beating him and just marching like that. And, and everything will come under your feet. You just march on everything. Instead of, you know, standing on the promises, they are, they are sitting in the premises. And they sit down there. And I say, and, and I see them sitting down, and I see that they are dozing, and you know, some air is breathing on them, it's uh, blowing on them, and it's like, you know, they even, they're having some nightmares and some dreams, and I see them, it's like their head is going to drop on the ground. And then I say, everybody, if you are sitting down in the premises of your problem, can you stand up now on the premises of the victory and the glory of the Lord? And I still see them. It's like they're dreaming. They are, uh, it's like I'm hearing a particular voice. What are they saying? I'm saying stand on the promises of God. And then you have the victory and you stand on the devil and your position. You claim your position and you claim your power and everything will become totally different in your life in Jesus' name. I go to point number two. Our power in Christ. We have power in Christ. I said we have power in Christ. Our power in Christ. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, I'm reading verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh in us. If we're children of God, we're not strangers to the power of God. That power is working in us already. If somebody is sick, and as he's sick, he's saying, I am sick. But I wonder, but look at this. While you're sick, while you think you're tired, there is a power that is working. Walketh, walketh, walketh in us. I see somebody, it looks his body is tired and he's lying down and he, he wants to sleep and the sleep will not come. Just close your eyes and receive the ministration of the power that walketh in you. It's walking. You know, it's like if you're sick, for example, and a doctor gives you a particular pill. You may not feel that there's any difference. You say, doctor, the pill you gave me two minutes ago, I thought it would have worked. My temperature is still the same. It says, don't worry. That thing is working already. 
They have trained us. They make us to understand. When you swallow it like that, it's working already. Don't worry. Just look away from it now. And in a few minutes, in a few hours, everything will be alright because that thing you are taking is working, working, working. There is a power that worketh in us. And because of that power, according to that power that works in us, remember next time, when it appears, difficulties are near, challenges are near, and the difficulties are terrible, and the problems appear unbearable. Remember, remember, while that looks like it's happening on the surface, there is a power that works in us. And according to that power that works in us, with divine ability, here he tells us, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us in second timothy chapter one second timothy chapter one reading from verse six second timothy one six wherefore i put you in remembrance Ah, uh, there's something here. Look up here. Why is it that Timothy appeared timid, appeared weak? Because he was forgetting something. And Paul, the apostle, see, many of us, when we see a brother, he's weak. We see a sister, she's down. We think the thing to do at this time, pray for brother so and so. Pray for sister so and so. Maybe all that fellow needs is just to remind him, remind her of what she possesses and she doesn't remember, she doesn't know, this is my heritage. This is my inheritance. This is my possession. Remind them. You are in Christ. All things are possible. The Lord has translated you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son and the lord with his power in through the holy ghost is walking in you and so wherefore i put you to remembrance that thou stir up the gift of god how do you do that it varies from person to person and some people stir up the gift of god that is in you some people to start the gift in them will just begin to talk to themselves talking the promises of god and it'll just begin to say the lord is my shepherd and they will emphasize all the personal pronouns they see all the personal pronouns they come across in the references they're quoting and by the time they do that for five minutes and ten minutes they're stirred up other people, what they will do is just to sing. And as they sing the promises of the Lord, and they sing the, the words of the Lord, uh, you know, there is, you know, the normal singing. The normal singing, you just speak your songbook, standing on the promises, you sing. Switch is the promise, you sing. And all that, as you sing through, and you sing, and you repeat, and repeat, and repeat, you stir up the power of God within you. Other people, they just look, they just open the scriptures, the Psalms in particular, and they go from Psalm 1, and then they go to Psalm 27, and then they go to Psalm 37, and then they go to Psalm 46, and then they go to Psalm 63, and then they go to Psalm 91, and then they go to Psalm 103, and then they go to Psalm 119, and then they go to Psalm 145. And as they read, as they read, they just read the Psalms after the other, before you know what is happening, the gift of God in them is turned up already. Whichever one is your method, whichever one works for you, stop. The gift of God, which is in you by the putting on of my hands. And now uh, there's something here. It's difficult to pass through some of these verses without telling you. Paul the Apostle said, Timothy, what am I seeing? Weakness, timidity, fear. I, I have the assurance. Anybody I lay my hands upon, timidity will not remain there. Fear will not remain there. And all that uh, shaking and trembling will not remain there. Did I not lay my hands on you? Ah, remember then. Stop. 
what you received at the time I laid hands on you by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Of what? Of power and of love and of a sound mind. We have power. I said we have power. Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to do what? Have you gone back home? I said to do what? Why do some people say, Pastor, you need to pray for me? Because there's a serpent spirit walking all over my body. The power he gave you is to make you walk, tread, march on serpents and scorpions. And over how much power? All the power of the enemy, wherever you are, whatever location you are ministering, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. And uh, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Give me a good amen there. Number one, our position in Christ. Number two, our power in Christ. Number three, our possession in Christ. Thank God I have something. I said, thank God I have something. Do you have anything? Do you have power? Do you have the promises of God? And do you have assurance in your heart? Have you got anything from the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you got faith since you started in this race, this journey from here to heaven? Did Jesus give you faith? Tell me out loud. You must, you must have got it. You must have got it. How could you get saved without having faith? He gave you something. How could you have gotten sanctified without having faith? He gave you something. How could you have been filled with the Holy Ghost without having faith? He gave you something. How could you have received your healing? That other time, you remember, without having faith, he gave you something. And then how could you have ministered to the people in need without having faith? He gave you something. Now, when you go about, don't go about as if I'm unfortunate. I don't have anything. All these messages they are giving, they encourage me for a moment of time, but I, I wish I had something. My brother, you have it. Just understand, you have it. And it is yours in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, uh, there are times uh, you don't feel what you have. And you have to sometimes pinch yourself and ask yourself, do I have this or that? Uh, for example, since I've been talking now, since we started this message, you didn't feel the weight of your brain. Do you have brain? Do you feel it? Since I started, uh, you know, this morning with you, did you just become conscious that, do I have eyes at all? You're not even thinking of that. Do you have eyes? Yes, but you see. But you don't even think about it. And uh, as we talk, and you are hearing everything, and sometimes it's even too loud for you. And uh, you are saying, I hear everything, but you are not conscious that you have ears. It's only when something is scratching you, then you touch it and scratch it. Then you, you just become conscious that the ears are still there. They have not been cut off uh, since last night that you slept. They are still there. Touch it now, you see they are still there. But you are not conscious, but it's always there. And the possession you have in Christ, the faith you have in Christ, the assurance you have in Christ, the glory that he has poured upon your life, it is there. You have something in Jesus' name. It's like when we were, you know, still going to school. And we didn't know how much knowledge we had got. And he said the exam was coming. And, uh, you know, once in a while, some of us, you become afraid. You even wanted them to postpone the exam. It's as if uh, I do not have enough knowledge. I don't know how I'm going to get through. And yet, you have the knowledge. 
And then you go to the exam hall. And while you're still there, you're still wondering, I don't know what's going to happen here now. Because you don't know you have what you have. And then they bring the papers. You read the questions. And then you put your pen on paper. And from the point of time, you, you put your pen on paper. And you keep on writing. You keep on writing. And while you're writing one sentence, another sentence is flowing in. And you don't know that all those things were there. By the time they said uh, pens up and hands down, you've written so many pages. And the result comes out. And you have distinction. And you have the material for distinction inside you. Without being conscious, you have the material. And I'm telling you that in ministry, you are going to have distinction. You are going to succeed. You are going to go higher than you ever thought in Jesus' name. Because you have what you don't think you have. But whether you think or you don't think, whether you know or you don't know, I've given you information already and it is confirmed in your heart and it is confirmed by God. The possession you have through Christ will work effectively in your ministry in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, I'm looking at verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, looking at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. He has blessed us. He's done it already. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ah, look at this. You forget it. Somebody has some money in the bank. And here he is hungry. And he is not wearing good clothes. And he needs the money. And it's just a matter of going to the bank. He says, yes, that's my problem. The, the bank is so far away. I wish I had banked my money in a nearby place so that whenever I needed the money, it, it would be like, you know, next door, that my house is next door to the bank and I just get there and I catch what I need. Ah. But your bank is so far away, that is why you couldn't have what you should have got. Yes, but I need to remind you. Look at this. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? I said where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How many words? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus. How many words? Six. But look at chapter 2, verse 6. The last six words. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Your house is next to the bank. Where you are seated is next to your bank. Where all the spiritual blessings that you have been blessed with deposited to your account. Where that account is, is exactly where you are sitting because he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That place where you are now, you've got it. You'll stretch out your hand of faith immediately. And all the spiritual blessings, all the material blessings, all the natural blessings, every possession you need, you stretch out your hand immediately. It is yours this morning. Rise up and get it. You'll stand on the devil now. You'll stand on the promises of God now. You'll stand on your problems now. You will not sit in the premises of your problem. And you'll not be sleeping and dozing. And then you will not uh, be wondering whether you've got anything or not. You know your position in Christ. You know your power in Christ. You know your possession through Christ. Reach out your hand. Reach out your hand. You must get something this morning. You must get something this day. Because it is yours. It is yours. You will not remain spiritually poor. You will not remain spiritually timid. You will not remain spiritually fearful. You will not remain spiritually anemic, weak, powerless. But you are strong in the Lord. 
the Lord has made you strong. The Lord has lifted you up. And the Lord has given you the position, the power, the possession. It is yours. That place where you are now, reach out your hand of faith and grab it and possess it. It is yours in Jesus' name. You have something. You have something. You have the promises of God. You have the power of the Lord in your life. And you are the inheritance of the kingdom. You are a new creature. Old things are passed away. All the old fear, the old humidity, and the old trembling, and the old shaking, all that is gone. It's gone. It's gone. You are not what you used to be. Stand on your right, spiritual right. Stand on your possession. That's yours. Stand in your inheritance. It is yours. And the word of faith is in your mouth. And the power of the Lord is in your life. You will never, never be the same again. It's yours. All spiritual blessings, all material blessings, all natural blessings, all desirable blessings are to your account. In your account, they are available and they are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that's exactly where you are seated, that's where you are standing. That's where you have your spiritual position. It is yours. Claim it, receive it, and possess it and enjoy it. You are not weak, you are strong. You will not fail, you will succeed. The work of God will not scatter in your hand. The work of God will prosper in your hand. You are the beloved of the Lord. But your position is greater and higher and better than that of Daniel under the old covenant. You are now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yours is the victory. Yours is the power. Yours is the authority. You have power over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a good amen there. If you are new creatures, can you raise up your hand? Now, I told you there are a lot of implications and a lot of ramifications on being a new creature. One of them is this. A new creature speaks a new language. All through this day, remember, you are not an ordinary person. You are an extraordinary person. Remember, you are not an old creature. You are a new creature in Christ. New language. Don't say, I am sorry for myself. Old language. I never get anything. Old language. It's unfortunate. I don't know why I am the way I am. Old language. You are a new creature. You are a new creature. Your future is bright. The promises of God are yes and amen in your life. All your needs are supplied in Christ. Your joy will be full. You'll be walking in the path that leads to success. Let all through this day, all through this day, change the language. Let the old language, I'm sorry for myself, I am unfortunate, I am unlucky, I never get anything. The sickness is coming again. Whenever I feel like I'm feeling now, eh, something is coming, something is coming. In fact, I need to really get a good accommodation now because I know by the evening I'm going to lie down. You'll see, you'll see. I'll not be able to get up. I don't know whether I'll be able to enjoy this conference at all. And I, and I came with real good intention wanting to enjoy, but, but but look at what is happening to me. All that is gone in Jesus' name. New creature, new language. I am successful. I am powerful. I am bold. I am, I am mighty. The power of the Lord will not fail in me. I have love within me. And I'm going to do good in the life of everybody I meet today. All the people I contact today, I'll be sharing the blessings of God. I am a blessing to my family. I am a blessing to the church. I am a new creature. There is new language in my mouth. Say good things about yourself and they are confirmed in Jesus' name. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you because of what you have shown us today. Our position, our power, our possession in Christ. I pray for every brother. I pray for every sister that the dynamite of the Holy Ghost will come into everyone this morning. In Jesus' name, lift up your people from the valley and bring them to the mountain top. In Jesus' name, from weakness unto strength. From failure unto success. And then you lead them from defeat unto victory in Jesus' name. All these brothers, all these people I see on the one side, I don't see outside there. I pray, everyone today, the spirit of the conqueror. The thought of the conqueror. The lifestyle of the conqueror. The meditation of the conqueror, the possession of the conqueror, you will give unto everyone in Jesus' name. And Lord, with our mouth, we possess our possession. With our thoughts, we possess our possession. By standing on the promises that cannot fail, we possess our possession. Everyone here, Lord, I proclaim according to your word, they will succeed in ministry. They will be happy and joyful in their lives. Their families will be what their families ought to be. And Lord, I pray that we'll be having blessing, sharing blessing, and distributing blessing as we interact with one another in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we stand together in prayer for this church, for this assembly, nothing shall be impossible. I pray that everyone here will get to that place where you have put us. I will be the head and not the tail. On top and not at the bottom. Progressing and not retrogressing. Succeeding and not failing. Confirm your miracle and your power upon everyone here this morning, Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.